You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. What's going on everyone? Kenan here. How you doing? How's everyone going? It's beautiful, man. It is an amazing day. I'm excited to get to it. Uh, you know, kind of hang out with the animals and, uh, well, just see what's all been going on. So, uh, it's my first, uh, well, it's my first steps outside for today, which is always exciting. So I'm going to bring you guys along with me as I answer Seth Isaacson's question. And Seth simply asks, hey, Kenan, what are some good enrichment ideas for reptiles? Now, this is a fun question. Um, I've got my own theories. I'm not an academic. I'm not a biologist. I'm not a scientist that does these things and studies them day in and day out. But I do work with my reptiles every single day, and I've been keeping them for a very long time. So I think I'm qualified to kind of wax poetic about what I think enrichment means and what it is for these animals. So uh, let's start moving around the camp. I'm going to walk around the camp and I'm just going to show you uh, some things that I do. And first of all, you're going to find out the things I do are quite simple. Uh, basically, we're out in the sulcata enclosure right now, which is going to change. Um, they're not going to be out here for very much longer. We're going to move them. But the key guys with enrichment for turtles and tortoises is as naturalistic a habitat as possible. Here are two, it's starting to get hot, and uh, they're kind of hanging out. There's a female, she's been around since 1977. She came into the United States that size in 1977. That is the oldest tortoise I have here. And then right here is Lumps. Lumpy came to me from Long Island, New York. Good friend of mine's father sent them to me. Uh, and I've had Lumpy since 2004, since the day I moved into this camp. Now, as you can see, Lumpy kind of has created a little bit of a pallet. It's not quite a burrow, but it is, uh, he's able to dig, and that's some of their natural behavior. We've discussed sulcata digging before, uh, how to allow it, how to kind of stop them from doing it. So check out that video. It's from a few months ago. But with the tortoises, I kind of want them to have a naturalistic environment. So we're going to walk around and I'm going to show you all of them uh, just so you can get ideas. It's really about trying to recreate uh, in this country or wherever you may be their natural habitat. Now, this is definitely not the Sahara, right? Not the Sahal, the southern fringe of the Sahara. But, you know, I spread hay out. They nibble on the hay. I feed them off the hay. They're eating grass. They're interacting. They've got a mud wallow right here that they do actually use. Um, this is where they're drinking from. Uh, water comes out underground from Slinky's enclosure and it floods here. It's kind of keeping this ficus tree really happy. Uh, and also the tortoises like to drink from puddles. Now there are other ways you can do it. You can have a water dish, but I would recommend putting some kind of uh, mister or something above it so that it drips into the water and creates agitation. They seem to really like to drink from rippling puddles because what does that mimic? It mimics when it rains. They only drink when it rains in the Sahal. So they might be programmed to move towards running water or to rippling water. That's a theory I have. Now, as far as enrichment, they can interact with the entire place. Uh, they explore, they move around, they're grazing. Uh, basically, they're going through their natural behaviors, okay? Now, if you have a turtle or tortoise in captivity and you don't have access to any of the um, you know outdoors as we have down here in Florida, you're gonna have to come up with things that mimic their behavior. Uh, number one, one of the things, let's see, I just got this thought. Before we go in there, I wanna show you just something simple that I did um, that mimics natural behavior for uh, turtles and tortoises. You know, you wanna kinda keep the animals busy, especially if they're indoors. So that means either placing food in interesting areas uh, places where they have to search it out so they don't become obese uh, or create uh, furniture in the enclosure that would mimic their natural environment. <laughs> Look at the three amigos right here. There's Nostradamus, Darwin, and Socrates. And the very first Camp Cannon video was us building this watering area. Uh, it's empty right now. I am going to uh, fill it back up once I clean it out. But you can see this was built so that the Galapagos tortoises can climb. Very important, okay? You gotta know what these animals do in the wild. And basically, they love to climb over rocks. They live in a very rocky area. 
So climbing is very important. It strengthens their legs. I've said this ad nauseum. Uh, so for Galapagos tortoises, that's something that I did specific to the animal's needs. Uh, and I got that idea from my good friend Colette Adams, who is a very uh, uh, knowledgeable tortoise and crocodilian expert at the Gladys Porter Zoo down in Brownsville, Texas. Uh, you know, other things that I like to do <clears throat> is allow the animals to kind of wander through this large thicket of palmettos. They kind of climb over the trunks, under the trunks, they're moving around. They're eating weeds in there. So again, they're basically acting like normal wild tortoises. Very, very important. So that's something that I really think just gives them a much better existence. Now, we have the front right over here. We don't have any tortoises in it yet because we're going to be doing some work here in a few weeks with my friend John Adams. Uh, we're going to create a stream. I'll show you where. But here is Sophia's pond. <clears throat> but look at the pond itself. Once I put turtles back in here, guys, it's a naturalistic pond. All sorts of little crevices, little rocks to bask on. They can come out and explore around the margins of the pond, plants to hide in. All those things will enrich your animal's life. The fish themselves, we're keeping African cichlids here. They go in and out of the rocks. They have shelter, they have places to hide. That's still enrichment because you've created a natural environment, okay? That's the goal, all right? We are in the 21st century of animal keeping and caretaking, and it is time to get out of the dark ages. Animals deserve more than a glass box. Here's the other side. Uh, this is the original aquascape pond, and you can see it is just doing amazingly. Again, once turtles are reintroduced into here, they are going to just have a great time basking on logs, exploring for food. Uh, some of the other things you can do is kind of hide food in some of the rocks and make sure that they're actually getting over there to eat it. Uh, look at all these little cichlids and of course the two Oscars. Um, we lost the, three, the third Oscar, which was a bummer. Uh, he got sick and died. Um, but I do have these two beauties still doing very well and they regulate the pond for me. Uh, but again, guys, naturalistic enclosures. I don't know if you're getting tired of hearing me say that. It is the best thing you can do. All right, so looking over here, we're gonna have that stream. I've been getting the rocks ready. We're gonna have a stream running right down through here so that the entire front is gonna be a giant aquascape ecosystem. And I'm really excited about that. It's gonna balance things out. And then we'll get some tortoises in here and they're gonna wander around and eat the grass. Again, doing what they're programmed to do by nature. Keep the lawn mowed, they'll have a water source. It's going to be awesome. So let's move on over and let's go in to Slinky's environment, the Slinky's habitat. And I'll show you a little bit what I do for a large lizard like that. Okay, Slinky's very intelligent. The Cyclura intelligent here is Pinky. She's out and about this morning. Hi, Pinky. She's got a basking area. She's got multiple logs. Uh, she's got her water. Now what I do is I'll hide food in different areas of her enclosure and let her use that really cool tongue that she's got so that she's able to kind of use those senses and kind of flex her lizard brain, if that makes sense. You want to make sure that they're thinking, that they're looking, that they're moving. You don't want these animals to become obese. It is something that can absolutely happen with these animals. So let's go on in. Before we do, just a quick look over here at the carpet pythons. These guys have a large enclosure. They can explore. They like to hide in the grass right there. There is the female and then there is Colin. Okay, I have water dripping in here. The water bowl is shaded. It always overflows and that's important. We've got all kinds of things happening here. Hey there, little one. Hey there, little one. I like waking them up. Hey guys, say hello to everybody. Look, there is Colin. All right, what's up, Col? So you guys are getting the idea, right? It's about creating cool habitats. Now, I know some of you live up north. You might not be able to go to these lengths, but there's so much you can do with some of the really cool products that are out there. Like if you go check out our friends at ZooMed, they make a lot of nice uh, substrates and naturalistic um, you know, furniture for your animals. 
So I would recommend looking into that uh, and getting creative with how you build these things. Now here is Slinky. There he is. Uh, Slinky just had a pretty good meal yesterday. So he's all bloated out right now. And uh, basically he's just sunbathing, but you see he's got places to sunbathe, places to move around. He's got a large pool to swim in. Uh, he, uh, I do the same thing with him as I do with Pinky, where I'll hide food, make him hunt for it. This way he's not just sitting around and being lethargic. I also bring Slinky out, you guys know that. I bring him out so that he can explore around. He's a larger lizard. I have the leash, I'm able to kind of get his brain moving because monitor lizards are a different animal. They love to actually explore and that's what their name implies. They are monitoring. They're always walking around checking things out and you need to learn what your animals are supposed to be doing in the wild, okay? So tortoises are a little bit different. They're creatures of habit. They like things to stay the same. They like their habitats to stay the same and it makes sense because of the type of animals they are they can run into trouble pretty easy. And a tortoise's defense is to go into a shell. So if it knows its home range, it doesn't move fast, it doesn't move around quickly. So a home range for them, they're gonna wanna make sure there's grasses, there's weeds, and of course a water source. And they learn all of those areas. And that's why they don't do well with habitat loss or relocation sometimes because they're so used to certain things. Now, the monitors, they'll have a home range also, but they're a little bit different, a little bit more intelligent. They're able to kind of prod through things. They explore, and uh, by exploring, they're looking for food. They're encountering different situations, so they're always learning, which is so, so important for them. So what I like to do, as I said, I bring him out. I throw food around in different areas. He digs a lot. You might, I hide food under the ground, um, and he'll dig it up. And that's fine. Just get in there. It's so exciting, you know? And that's another thing, guys. Don't worry about collecting so many animals. You don't want to think of it as a collection. You want to think of it as, what animals can I have? And what can I provide for? And keep them super energetic and happy and thriving. So that's what I do with Slinky. I uh, love bringing this guy out. He's one of my favorite guys to hang out with because he is so interesting. Uh, and so there you have them. And you know, the other thing I've been noticing is these are breaking. I'm gonna actually get in here and remove all these. I don't like the way they're breaking. He breaks them. So I'm gonna remove that bamboo so that he doesn't get caught on anything. That'll be a good job for me to do later on today when uh, I'm done filming all my videos. So uh, always learning what works and what doesn't with the habitat, uh, super important. So I would recommend keeping an eye on that. So I've been noticing these are breaking. I don't like it. I don't want them to get caught in them uh, and we'll just break it off or we'll just remove it and it'll be fine. But you see how this guy's acting? I'm in here, he's looking for something to eat. Believe me, he's well fed, he ate yesterday. Uh, and he was all fattened out trying to expose himself uh, for the sun. But you can also notice he's got the lateral folds, which is important. You never want an obese monitor lizard. So many people overfeed them in captivity up north and the animals are less healthy for it. You wanna just give them enough food that they can maintain a nice body weight and grow. And look at how he's able to move nicely and uh, pretty spelt. Let's move on into Guapo and Lola. They're always walking around waiting for me. They greet me everywhere. They just had some collard greens yesterday. So they're not gonna eat right now. But again, a different type of lizard, right? Rock iguanas. So this is more of a terrestrial setup. These guys are basically gonna be ground dwellers and they're gonna climb over rocks. Uh, they will climb uh, thick enough branches and things like that, but they really don't climb too much as they get into adulthood, all right? So right now these guys are adults and we got good old Lola. She's shedding a little bit and she lets me kind of scratch on her pull off some of this dead skin. It must feel good. I love her so much. She's such a solid girl and a beauty too. So basically these guys have lived in here their entire lives. But as you've seen in some of my live videos, I do pull them out so they can walk around the pond and kind of check things out. I love to photograph them near that beautiful pond. Uh, eventually, I would love to be able to get them uh, a different type of enclosure, a larger enclosure. Uh, and so that's part of the long-term goals here is to create something new for them. Because even though this is definitely big enough, 
I would prefer them to have even more uh, space. I just love space for the animals. That's what I do. Now, I uh, highly recommend trying to do the same thing because it's just going to make it easier for you and uh, you're going to have happier reptiles, which is the goal, isn't it? It's not about saying, ooh, look what I've collected, look what I have. Hold on, I'm going to grab somebody real quick. I'm not leaving you guys. I just thought it would be nice to kind of pull on up and show you when you have happy reptiles, they just relax, they hang out with you, and it's truly a gift to be able to work with these animals. So. That's my ideas on enrichment, hiding things around, large enclosures that mimic natural behavior. Uh, then you won't have to worry so much about enrichment. But if you do, just simple things. I mean, reptiles don't really like to play, uh, but they will do things with certain toys. So you might wanna buy some toys, put some food into it, uh, put areas where they're gonna wanna bask, where they have to climb, maybe work for their food, work for their water. These are things that are gonna keep the physiology both uh, physically and mental uh, capacity of the animal slinkies moving around. They're gonna make him happy. So, okay, everyone, there you go. There is your question and answered, Isaac. I hope you enjoyed it. For those of you who wanna help out with the videos, head on over to patreon.com slash camkennan and uh, become a Patreon supporter because it really does help us continue to make these videos and uh, we hope you guys like them. I hope you guys love Guapo. Lola's down here, but my arms are full. Don't forget to like and subscribe and head on over to the Camp Cannon Army channel where you guys can see more content. Oh, and another thing I should mention, Patreon, we're putting up a lot of new and original content there as well. So it's really a great place to see some more supplemental footage that you won't see anywhere else. Ready to go down? All right, everyone, he's, he's out of here. See you later. Here's Darth Maul, everybody. There she is, the one and only. What a gal, look at that face.